This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, War, Peace, and the Presidency, Breaking with Convention. We're broadcasting from the studios of Can TV here in Chicago. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Hi, Nermeen. Uh, hi, Amy. The third night of the Democratic National Convention on Wednesday was headlined by Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, formally accepting the Democratic Party's vice presidential nomination. The evening featured a host of celebrity speakers and prominent Democrats. But the most solemn portion of the evening was an address by the parents of an American-Israeli hostage, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, who has been held in Gaza since October 7th. Poland's parents, John Poland and Rachel Goldberg, wore pieces of tape with the number 320, marking the number of days their son has been held hostage. As they spoke, the convention hall was largely silent. In his remarks, John Poland also called for an end to the war in Gaza. There is a surplus of agony on all sides of the tragic conflict in the Middle East. In a competition of pain, there are no winners. In our Jewish tradition, we say, kol adam olam umlo'o. Every person is an entire universe. We must save all these universes. In an inflamed Middle East, we know the one thing that can most immediately release pressure and bring calm to the entire region, a deal that brings this diverse group of 109 hostages home and ends the suffering of the innocent civilians in Gaza. John Poland, the father of American-Israeli hostage Hirsch Goldberg Poland, addressing the Democratic National Convention last night. At the same time, delegates with the uncommitted movement received word that their request for a Palestinian American to address the convention was denied by the DNC and the Harris campaign. Uncommitted delegates were selected in state Democratic primaries earlier this year to call for an end to the Biden administration's backing of Israel and its assault on Gaza. After the Democratic National Committee denied their request for a Palestinian-American speaker on stage, uncommitted delegates and their allies staged a sit-in outside the convention hall. They remain throughout the night. The sit-in is still ongoing at the time of this broadcast. These are some of the voices from that sit-in last evening, beginning with the co-founder of the uncommitted movement, Abbas Alawea. The Democratic Party is actively suppressing a Palestinian American from speaking from this stage. We urge the Democratic Party to reconsider. I've worked across the aisle. I've written bipartisan bills. I was a congressional staffer. I'm proud of it. I'm proud that I was a Democratic congressional staffer. And so, as part of our negotiation with the DNC, we gave them a list of names. One such name is a Palestinian American elected representative from Georgia. Her name is Ruwa Rumman. If for some reason Ruwa didn't pass the vetting, then I want to know what the issue is. I want Ruwa to speak. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ruwa Roman. I am a Georgia state representative. I'm an elected Democrat. I come from the swing state of Georgia. We are not here to create any divisions. As my colleagues have said over and over and over again, the only reason we are here, the only reason we are here is to ensure that Donald Trump will never make it to the White House and save the lives of the people that we love. It's about the fact that today I watched my party say our tent can fit anti-choice Republicans, but it can't fit an elected official like me. I do not understand. I do not understand why being a Palestinian has become disqualifying in this country. I don't know how much more we have to prove. All of us have decade or more long resumes working for this party because we know that this party is the only one that's ever tried to meet the promise of our country. We are here to literally save the soul of our party. 
I do not understand why that is a bad thing. This would have truly and sincerely been a beautiful gesture to show. This party cares about the cries of an Israeli child the same way they care about the cries of a Palestinian child. That's right. We are not asking for too much. All we wanted was to be on that stage and show people desperate for hope there is something to hope for. My name is June Rose. I came into this week feeling hopeful. When President Biden was the nominee, I felt hopeless. Hopeless because our presidential nominee, who we are putting forth to take on Donald Trump, was enabling a genocide of Palestinians, was providing the bombs used in a genocide of Palestinians, and hopeless because I felt, like so many others, that he had no chance of beating Donald Trump anyways. And then Vice President Harris became the nominee. And I felt hopeful for the first time in a long time. I felt like we might beat Donald Trump. And then I heard her speak about Palestinians. I heard her speak when Benjamin Netanyahu, a genocidal leader, came and visited this country. And disgracefully, Congress let him speak in front of it. And I heard empathy in her voice for Palestinian suffering. And I thought, maybe we're turning a page. Maybe we'll get something different. What is a bigger issue in this moment than in the midst of a housing crisis where no one can afford a place to live, in the midst of a climate crisis, crisis posing an existential threat to our planet, when every single dollar in this country is meaningful towards creating the world that we want to see, and instead, billions of dollars going to kill children across the world, billions of dollars instead of addressing the crises in front of us, are going to tear families apart, where generations are wiped off the map, where children will have to go the rest of their lives without knowing another member of their family? Is that what we pay taxes for? Is that what we elect these people to do? My name is Sabrina Oda, and I'm an uncommitted delegate from Washington State, a Palestinian uncommitted delegate from Washington State. To know as a Palestinian, my voice, my people's voice is not important enough to be on the main stage is heartbreaking. The Palestinians in Gaza are suffering the most unimaginable circumstances. These are teachers, these are doctors, these are artists, these are dreamers. They deserve to live. All four of my grandparents were survivors of the Nakba from a village called Al Malha in Palestine. My family still lives in a refugee camp internally displaced in the West Bank to this day. They live under occupation to this day since 1948. How many more Palestinians need to die until the American government stops sending arms to kill them? What more do we have to do? What more do we have to do? They have our names on the list of the dead. They have our sisters' names, our brothers' names, our parents' names, our grandparents' names. Asma Muhammad, I'm the co-chair of the Minnesota delegation of uncommitted delegates. Every single one of us who are sitting here have been getting calls and texts from our family members and people from our community. The nearly 740, no, the nearly million voters who voted for us to be here as delegates asking what's happening, asking for updates on what is happening because they asked for us to be here. They elected us as delegates to be here to represent them inside. They wanted a reason to support the vice president. They wanted us to leave this convention saying Vice President Harris supported a plan for a ceasefire and she did that by putting in an arms embargo. She did that by stopping the bombs. Imagine all one million, nearly one million of those voters watching right now and saying that party isn't representing me right now. I want you to imagine you are a young Muslim woman 
watching right now. You're a Palestinian watching right now. You're a young anti-Zionist Jew watching right now. You're a Gen Z voter watching right now, wondering how is this party representing me in this moment? Wondering where do I fit in? When I was organizing in Minnesota, we got 46,000 votes in just eight days. Imagine if we had the three weeks that Abbas had in Michigan. I imagine we'd have a lot more. We do it. Yeah, we do it. We, we do, do it. it. Challenge accepted. Let's Challenge go. accepted. At this convention, I brought a young Muslim woman with me who the other day said, Asma, sometimes it feels like they don't even want us here. I challenge you, Vice President Harris, to make Palestinians, to make young Muslims, to make the anti-Zionist Jews, to make Gen Z voters welcome in this party, to remind everyone that this tent is big enough for all of us, to remind everyone that we can be the Democratic Party that stands up for human rights, the one that I know and love, because I know the Republican Party does not give a damn about me. Right. I know that this party is the only party that can and will uphold human rights. I want a reason to believe in this party again. Give us that reason, Vice President Harris. Dan Engelhart, it's a big night for Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, uncommitted delegate. In 2002, I was staff. We had a paid canvas for the late Senator Paul Wallstone, who voted against the Iraq war, and the polls went up. Tim Walls likes to talk about Paul Wellstone. They need to have that courage and realize that, that people respond to that. And we all know that that was a horrible mistake, the Iraq war. And this is ex exponentially worse, what's happening with our bombs and our money. With 70, little over 70 days left, this is about winning. I've been doing a lot of talking to delegates here and getting people to sign that letter and come on support. Somebody on the elevator said she, she was really having a hard time. And she finally got it out and said, so do you think Palestine matters more than saving democracy? And I said, they are connected. They are absolutely connected. That's what this is about. Now the vice, pres uh, the vice presidential pick is our governor, Tim Walls. You're going to hear him and people from Minnesota talk a lot about Paul Wellstone and the famous quote, we all do better when we all do better. That should include Palestinians. I say that to the vice presidential pick. Governor Walls, if you're hearing this, we all do better when we all do better, and that includes Palestinians.